Uh, but the big answer, of course, is a vaccine or some sort of treatment. There are dozens and dozens of research teams from around the world working on finding a vaccine for COVID-19. And that, of course, includes here in Canada. Finding one could be the key to getting more normal than we will have in the next uh, number of weeks. Daryl Falzarano is an adjunct professor with the Department of Veterinary Microbiology at the University of Saskatoon. He's part of the team trying to develop a vaccine for the virus, and he joins me now from his lab, which is very cool. Good to see you. Nice to be on. Thank you. All right. So, so this is obviously the, this is a good way to end the show because everyone wants to know how close we are to a vaccine. What, what would be your best guess here, Daryl? Of when will one will actually be ready? I think no one really knows that for sure yet. Um, we're certainly moving closer and faster than you've ever seen before with any kind of um, vaccines, which normally are in the order of 10 years to be developed. Everyone's sort of talking around the one year mark. Um, that would bring us to sometime like January of, of, of next year. It seems like that is a possibility, at least um, to, to some extent, not, not probably a worldwide rollout of a vaccine at that point, though. What, tell me what kind of work you're doing to contribute to this massive sort of worldwide attempt to get a vaccine. So as soon as uh, the sequence of the first viruses were available in, um, as soon as China made those available online, we started working on a, on a vaccine concept here uh, using a similar approach that we did for MERS coronavirus mm -hmm. um, that works quite well in alpacas. We, were, we back then were, were planning on making a vaccine for camels. Uh, using the same approach though, um, we're, we're doing that now to make a vaccine for SARS-CoV-2 and uh, we've immunized animals and, and seen that their vaccine is immunogenic and we're just in the process now of seeing whether or not it's actually protective in, in an animal model. And so the next step would be human testing? So uh, there, there's sort of some steps in between there. We would need uh, GMP, like a good manufacturing um, practices product made. We expect mm -hmm. to have one of those done uh, in the summertime, so uh, approximately in July. That would then be uh, tested again in animals to, to ensure that it behaves the same way as our experimental vaccine. And then clinical trials, we're looking sort of fall for that starting. You know, I, I heard the other day there's about 100 people doing what you're doing, working on vaccines right now, and you're all very much collaborating. Have you ever seen anything like this in, in, in the science world? So people mainly get along, but, uh, but of course, normally it's competitive and you don't share your data uh, usually until it's all complete. Uh, and then it comes out, you know, published or sometimes presented early at conferences. Basically, now people are presenting their data almost in real time. So as soon as they have something available, that's, that's shared. Do you feel uh, some pressure from all of us? <laughs> because we so desperately want a solution here. Do you, do you feel the weight of that? Sure, of course. I mean, normally we, we sort of, I, I wouldn't say we work slowly, but, um, <laughs> you know, there, there doesn't seem to be any immediate urgency to to maybe what we do and then this case is is a little different that's certainly not a scenario i would say any of us have really worked um worked in before uh w w can you give me a sense of how how different it is uh, just in terms of a, a a challenge for you to take on as a scientist right so we're we're doing everything sort of as quick as we as we can um and but still as thoroughly as as, as possible so develop things uh, sort of things that would normally be done sequentially are all being done sort of one on top of another. Uh, and we have more staffing to do that. So our, our lab is over double the size they were, um, you know, starting in January. Um, and, and really everyone just working together as a team uh, to move things forward. So, so what would you tell Canadians then, Daryl, who are all, you know, anxious to go back to some sort of normal, moving into parts of the country where some of the restrictions are being lifted? What would be your, uh, your message to them tonight? Continue to follow public health guidelines, right? That, that has been, you know, fairly effective, um, you know, not effective enough yet. We still have increasing case numbers in, in some parts of the country. Follow those guidelines, you know, Take it easy. Don't be too urgent to get, uh, you know, back to what maybe you want to be doing. And, and really, I think it's important that people maybe stay in the place that they're in. There's no need to be moving across the country all the time or mm -hmm. maybe even moving outside of your province. You know, stay, stay in your home area. 
uh, and, and start appreciating things locally and looking at that first before you feel the need to, um, you know, be traveling further if it's really not essential. And really think about what is essential, um, yeah. you know, versus what you would just like to do. That's, that's good advice. Daryl Falzanero, an adjunct professor with the Department of Veterinary Microbiology at the University of Saskatchewan. I'm going to let you get back to work because it's so important. Good luck. Uh, sure. No pressure, but we're wishing the best for all of you and the team there. Thank you. Thank you.